I have good news and bad news about NDP leader Zhigmin Singh. First off, the bad news. There are ads all over news media and social media alleging that he is dead. Next up, the good news. He is very much alive. Just watch this clip. Hey everyone, uh, in case you saw the Edmonton Journal story, I've got some great news for everybody to, to see. Look who I found. Turns out I am alive. <laughs> <It's your laughs> I am doing well, Heather. <laughs> Now, I appreciate Singh being willing to laugh at this, but there's a real danger here. This is the same approach that we've discussed in a previous video where a bunch of fake ads were suggesting that purveyor of outstanding baked goods and terrific glasses, Mary Berg, had committed some sort of mysterious horror. It's just clickbait to get you to go to some sort of Bitcoin financing scam. They're just trying to get you money. And this is definitely not limited to Jigmeet Singh. A similar ad was put up around Pierre Poilievre, it just hasn't gotten as wide a run yet. And there's a couple of different reasons why I want to talk about this. First up, we need to be incredibly concerned about the fact that fake news can spread this easily and this widely across so many platforms, including real news outlets like the Associated Press, the Edmonton Journal, Toronto Star, and all over Twitter. And I want to be really abundantly clear here, not only because I don't want to get sued, but also because it's the truth. The news agencies don't have anything to do with the content of these ads. They don't vet or approve them, and in most cases, they're actively working to get them off their platforms. But it's not always that simple. Because in most cases, these news agencies aren't selling the ads directly. They're going through an ad selling agency, maybe Google AdSense, maybe something else. And in most cases, people just buy spots through those ad agencies and place their ads. And for a time, those ads were vetted, at least to some degree, and things were fine. An individual platform sold their ads a little more individually. So if you wanted to buy ads on Twitter, you would just go directly to Twitter and buy your ads there. Or, more likely, you did it through an ad agency, but you get the point. That's changed. A lot of this is now being done by third-party companies. A lot of third-party companies have just started buying up ad space on these websites and using them to push people to scams. And because they'll do it through numbered or offshore companies, it'll often be very difficult to track them down. And that's how you wind up with sites like this full of AI slop trying to sell people on Bitcoin or whatever it may be. So how did all this happen? How did all these terrible ads slip past the purveyors? The answer is algorithmic servicing. It sounds more fun than it is, I assure you. So what this means is, for a long time, ads were created by people, curated by people, consumed by people. There was a human touch at every level. That's more or less gone, and most of this is just done procedurally now. Many of these ads were never even run past a person. They've been generated by AI in order to farm as many clicks as possible. They use keywords like fatal or outrage in an effort to get you to click. And they'll harvest logos from things like the Toronto Star or CBC in order to lend credibility to their content. And it's all just completely made up nonsense. But because these spots are bought in bulk by these third-party ad agencies, they just pile them on. And they don't always get verified. And a lot of times, these platforms are getting increasingly desperate for ad buyers, particularly Twitter because it's dying. So they'll sign with an ad agency, the ad agency will fail to vet these ads, and the news agency is stuck playing catch-up. But the other problem is that traditional ad spending is shrinking and programmatic ad spending is growing. So agencies don't always have a choice but to accept ads from companies that have programmatic ads. They gotta pay the bills. And in many cases with these ad agencies, the companies that are buying the ads are getting way better at circumventing safeguards. They make stuff that looks like real content. Or they create such a fire hose of slop using AI that it's impossible to keep up with it. And I want to be really clear here. No individual layer bears responsibility except the people creating the ads. The companies that are serving the ads are usually doing the best they can to keep up. And they've contracted out a lot of those processes to third-party companies, who are again, under-resourced. And the news agencies are just hiring an ad agency to sell ads on their website. And typically, they are reporting these ads as quickly as they can, trying to get them removed. The only folks along this way who are evil are the ones buying the ad space and running the slop. They are definitely evil. I'm willing to take that leap. Everything else is just stuff slipping through the gaps and systemic failures. I think it's important to realize that the ad agencies and the news agencies are working their best to hold back a fire hose. AI is making this impossible to keep up with. There need to be laws preventing this sort of blatant misinformation. But there's also a significant role on the side of the platforms when it comes to moderation. They need to be dealing with this. We can't let them wash their hands up. Because it's dangerous. It undermines faith not only in platforms, but also faith in the truth becomes easier and easier to lie to people because the information becomes more saturated with nonsense. And that's the serious risk. Fake ads about Jagmeet Singh are silly on their face, but let's think about the implications about the fact that they're claiming that one of the country's most prominent politicians is dead on the websites of multiple credible news outlets as well as major social media. We need to address this on the side of the distributors, yes, but it's not the central issue. We need to look at the creators, the people making this content, and create regulations that prevent this sort of garbage. 